I'm not back in Missouri. I'm still here in Oregon. My flight out here was long, but uneventful. Saying goodbye to our chickens is one of the last things I'll need to do before flying back to Simple Moon Farm. We're not taking these chickens with us, but eventually we will be getting new chickens. Right now, I don't know exactly what's gonna become of all these chickens. Some of them have been promised to a neighbor down the road, and I've got another neighbor down the road who's interested in the chickens if whoever buys this place decides they don't want chickens. I've been here for over a month, mostly just trying to get things done as fast as I can. I haven't been shooting video. I did shoot a little video for the end of my stump nurse log trees update. But other than that, I really have just been trying to get things done as fast as I can. This is probably the very last video here at Ivy Acres Homestead. I thought it'd be nice to walk around with you guys and show you what I've been doing to get this place ready to sell. Our tour will also include a walk through our home, which I haven't really ever done on video, mostly because our place is usually a mess. You'll also get to see some of my artwork. Before we jump into that tour, I have some exciting chicken-related news to share. Grub Terra has asked me to be an affiliate that means you get 10% off when you use our special discount code Simple Moon Farm. I'll put a link in the video description so you can go right to their website. This is the very first chance our channel has had to make money. I'm hoping that Wendy takes my YouTube efforts a little more seriously when she sees that we are. Here's the product I'm recommending. Grub Terra's Black Soldier Fly Larva. The chickens love it and it's very beneficial for them. Would it be crazy for me to try some of this myself here on camera? Yes, it would and I'm not gonna do it. If you want your chickens to love you, feed them this super snack when you go out to see them. Here's a happiness hack because who doesn't wanna be happier? It's fun to feed someone else's chickens. It just is. I've had several occasions to observe this. Maybe you don't have chickens yourself, but you do buy farm fresh eggs from someone who does. Try getting a bag of this as a gift for them. Better yet, see if you can feed their chickens yourself. I bet you'll be the first on the list for available eggs if you're that egg customer who also brings chicken treats. You know, these aren't just dead worm carcasses. They really can be seeds of community. It was about a year ago when I first reviewed this product in a really fun video. Have you ever wanted to see a chicken sneeze? You gotta watch that video. Stronger eggs. Healthy feathers. What? You thought I was eating this, didn't you? Remember, Grub Terra's Black Soldier Fly Larva is nutritious and delicious for chickens. our new home search at the beginning of fall. The leaves fall pretty thick around here. Each time I could get back between loads with the trailer, I made a point of clearing out the gutter and pushing debris about halfway across the driveway, right to about there, so I could keep this drain clear and flowing. But I couldn't really get much more progress done than that. By the time I got out here this last time, 
there were a lot of leaves to deal with. This bin had been left empty and the rest of these compost bins had enough time to compost down a little bit. That one bin was not going to be anywhere near enough for all the leaves I needed to deal with. So I emptied this bin into those other bins between layers of leaves. Now, both of these bins are full of nothing but leaves ready to be fed into future compost piles. Also, when I got back out here this last time, that far compost bin was completely empty and this bin was completely full of finished compost. I had consolidated all of our finished compost right here specifically so I could use it to top off our raised beds. I wanted to wait for the garden to die back. <coughs> Whoa. I'm going to have to take care of that. I was waiting for stuff in the garden to die back before I could top off those raised beds. This bin was filled with, of course, more leaves layered with what I mucked out of the chicken run and our goat enclosures. I had saved some extra cedar chips from what we originally used with this area. So once this area was mucked out again, I just spread those out. Of course, I didn't fully muck out the goat enclosures, but still what I did was way more material than would have fit into that one compost bin. Most of the material ended up being used to fill in a root ball crater over there. I wanted to give you a second look at this really big tree that came down in the storm. The video that I shot of it before just didn't seem to capture the real size of it. Now I'm six feet tall so you can judge how big this root ball is. Raised beds really do look nice when they're topped off. Besides the compost, I also used potting soil from hanging baskets and flower pots that had, this time of year, dead things in them. Getting rid of those was a suggestion of our real estate agent. I composted a lot of the dead stuff out here, but I did leave a little bit of it in place as proof that the garden actually is productive. Leaves aren't the only things that drop this time of year. This is about, it's about half of what I shoveled off the driveway. They're pine needles and cedar debris and I really like using it in our chicken run for the chickens to scratch through. Moss needed to be knocked off the roof. And I pressure washed the deck and the back patio. Remember the catio that was on that back deck? and the vegetable washing station that was right here. Those went to a neighbor down the road who watched our animals for us while we were away. Thanks, Kathleen. She also gave our quail a good new home. Besides all that, I was also hauling off a lot of stuff to Goodwill and to the dump. My brother helped sell Wendy's car and a couple bikes. Thanks, Brandon. To make a good first impression here at the front of the house, I put these ferns here in this planter. Of all the things we've ever planted here, I actually think these ferns have the best chance to thrive. The inside of the house required 
a lot of cleaning and more things to pack. Wendy had taken some doors off, some of the interior doors, to paint. So I had to rehang those. Our real estate agent recommended that we paint over our accent walls, so I did that too. Right now, the house is staged with our own furniture and artwork. But I have to say, the place has been radically decluttered. The house is a split level built in 1972. It's got three bedrooms and two and a half baths. I really like the skylights in the core of the house because they bring natural light into the house. A lot of the artwork in here is of my own creation, but some of the pieces are works that I've collected over the years. This abstract pastel is by Kitty Wallace. She's one of my favorite artists. There's just a lot of spontaneous energy in her work, and I don't know anyone who has a more intuitive sense of color. Here's the living room. We've got a wood burning fireplace here and a gas fireplace down below. Of course, one of my very favorite parts of this house is the view out over the ravine. All of the wood sculpture in here are works that I've done. For the most part, they're designed around the concept of separate interlocking forms. This large collage on canvas is another one of my favorite pieces. It's by Hampton Rodriguez, and right there is a reference to Alberta Street. That's an arts district in Northeast Portland, and we were both involved with that area. This piece is also it also has a historical significance. The issue of the Portland Mercury is from September 11th, 2001. Of course, everyone remembers where they were that day. You might be wondering how I came to know so many artists and how I ended up with a collection of so many really good original works of art. Well, these people were my contemporaries on the art scene. Plus, I had a picture framing business for 25 years, and a lot of these works were trade or partial trade for framing services. These are some more of my works. I've developed a technique painting with acrylic on plastic and then peeling it back up. In this case, I've cut that peeled up acrylic paint into quilt patterns. Here's a nice little photograph by Claudia Howell. She was a photo editor at the Oregonian for a while. I've always enjoyed this little piece by Martha Mason. Here's the kitchen. I know Wendy is missing her fancy stove and double oven. Out here in the garage is where I did the picture framing business. Downstairs, we have the laundry room. And this, and this is where I did all of my YouTube editing. If you've watched many of my videos, you'll recognize this painting. It's another one of my works with acrylic.
probably have to be a woodworker to really appreciate all of the time and effort that goes into finishing pieces like this. For me, the forms themselves are pretty mind-blowing. There's a lot of engineering that goes into aesthetically and, and physically balancing these pieces. Let's take a look upstairs. Maybe it says something about me psychologically, but a lot of my artwork seems to be about fracturing things, either pictorially or physically, and then putting them back together. Here's another bathroom. This was one of my pieces that I did back in high school. This little piece, if you can see it through the reflections there, is a needlepoint by Carolyn Johnson Bell. She's also a very dear friend. And this was one of the bedrooms that Wendy used as her office. I know she'd like to be able to look right out the window at our bucks. From our bedroom window, she could look out over the does, so that works out pretty well. Here's the extra bedroom with some more of my work. and the main bedroom. These pieces are sort of homesteading related. We've got the rabbit and a goat and a chicken. This piece and this piece were by artists from Cuba. Alan Oliver from Onda Gallery put together a really amazing exhibit from, from Cuba and I did his framing for him and ended up buying those two pieces myself. Let's see. This is a work by Tamara English, another one of my very favorite Portland artists. This work is one of my photographic creations. It's Photoshop manipulated. I blended a close-up of a tulip and the peeling bark of a manzanita. The walk-in was designed by California Closets. I think it's pretty cool. And finally, the master bathroom. It's one of my works again. We always intended to remodel this space, but never really got around to it. 